You took the time to code your app and implement all the features. Now, you want to release it to the public, but you're not quite sure how. If this is your case, you came to the right place. In this video, I will show you how to prepare and build your Flutter app for production release on Android. To release your app to iOS, check this video. When you are preparing the release version of your app, for example, to publish it to the Google Play Store, you will need to put some finishing touches on it. For instance, you will need to change the default Flutter icon and the app name, sign the app, add a build configuration for release, and finally build the release app bundle. There are many approaches that you can use to implement those steps. But in this video, we will use the simplest one, which is to follow the steps described in the Flutter documentation. Especially, we will focus on what is necessary to get your app ready for release. First things first, let's make sure that we replace the default Flutter icon. For that, we will use the Flutter icon launcher package. So, let's add to the pubspec.yaml, and under the dev dependencies, we will paste these lines that will install the package and configure it. This path is where the icon is located in our project hierarchy. For more details about this package, check the link in the description. Now, let's open the terminal and run these commands to generate the icons. As you can see, the icons were generated successfully. Before running the app to see the new icon, let's also change the app name. For that, we will head to this path and read app src main and open the Android manifest.xml. Here, we will locate the Android label attribute and replace its value by the name of our app. Let's say my demo app. While we are here in the Android manifest, we can also set the app permissions. For example, if our application code needs internet access, we will add the android.permission.internet permission here. Now that we have changed the app icon and the app name, let's run it to see the results. If we did everything well, we should see a new icon and a new app name here. As you can see, we have successfully replaced the app name and the default icon. If you would like to have a more detailed tutorial on how to change icons, app names, or add custom splash screens, check the corresponding videos in this playlist. The link will be in the description below. Now, let's continue to create a key store to sign the app. App signing, key store generation, and why we need them can be the subject for its own video. For now, you just need to keep in mind that to publish to the Play Store, you need to give your app a digital signature. Google will use the signature to verify the app. Even if you don't plan to publish your app to the Play Store, you need to sign a release build to be able to install it on an Android device. As I said earlier, to sign your app, you need a key store. If you already have one, you can skip this section. If not, to generate a key store, you will use this command if you are on a Mac, or this one if you are on Windows. These are the path where the key store will be saved. In this case, it's in the current user home folder. If you want, you can change them to another location in your computer. Now, let's create our key. Since I am using a Mac, I will copy this command, go back to VS Code, and paste it. Let's adjust the path to save it in the current project folder. If this key tool command is not in your path variables, you will receive an error like this one. In that case, as mentioned in the documentation, we can run flutter doctor v, locate and copy the path after java binary at. Then we will replace the java at the end with key tool. Let's do that. To escape the spaces in the path, let's put it between quotes. Now, let's hit enter. This command will prompt you to enter a password for the key store and the private key. It will also prompt you to enter some additional information, such as your name and organization. As you can see, we have successfully created the key store at this location. The next step now is to reference the key store from the app. To do that, we will need to go back to VS Code and inside the Android folder, create a file called 
key.properties and paste those lines in it. Let's do that now. You need to provide those values that are related to the key store that you just created, the key store password and key password. In our case, we used the same password. The alias is the last word of the command that you used to create the key store. And the key store location, which is the path where you stored it. You should keep this key.properties file private. Do not check it into public source controls. Now that we have created the key.properties file, we need to load it to the app build gradle. For that, we will go to Android, app, and open the build.gradle file, not the project build gradle, the app build gradle. As mentioned in the documentation, we will first locate this Android section and add this block of code above it. Let's do that. Now, the second step is to add the signing configuration before the build types property block. With those configurations added, the release build of your app will now be signed automatically. Now, one final thing that we have to do is to review the Android build configurations. The first value is compile SDK, which Play Console requires to be in one year of the latest API version, 34 at the time of recording. Next value is the application ID. It looks like a Java package name. By default, Flutter set it to com that example that your project name. You need to change it to your own. For this app, I will replace example by MGS decoding and demo not app by demo app. This application ID will uniquely identify your app on a device and in Google Play Store. If you change the application ID, Google Play Store will treat the app bundle as a completely different app. So once you publish your app, you should never change the application ID. Next are the mean SDK version and the target SDK version. The mean SDK version specifies the minimum API level, the API level on which the app was compiled. The target SDK version specifies the API level on which the app is designed to run. When preparing to install your app, Android checks the value of these properties and compares them to the device API version. If the mean SDK version value is greater than the device API version, the system prevents the installation of the app. After publishing your application, Play Console will require you to come back and bump up the target SDK and the compile SDK to the latest versions. Otherwise, the availability of your app might be restricted on the Play Store. For a more detailed explanation on the difference between the mean SDK version and target SDK version, go watch this video. Next are the version code and version name. The version code, also called build number, is a positive integer used as an internal version number. It is not shown to the users. The Android system uses this number to prevent users from installing an APK with a lower version code than the version currently installed on their device. So you can set its value to any positive integer you want. However, you should make sure that each successive release of your app uses a greater value. Just keep in mind that the greatest value Google Play allows for version code is this number. Version name, also called version number or build name, is a string that is used as the app version and its main purpose is to be displayed to users. It generally follows the format of three numbers separated by dots. You can change those values in the pubspec.yaml file by setting the version property. This first part is the version name and after the plus is the version code. As explained in this comment section, you can also override those values in the terminal when you are building the app using the build name and build number parameters. When you will need to publish an update for your app, remember to come back here to change the versions. It's mandatory because both app stores use those values, especially the build number to manage the updates. Now that you have prepared your app and configured everything, it's time to build it for release. You have two possible release formats when publishing to the Play Store, app bundle, or APK. In this video, we will only generate the app bundle, 
since it is the format recommended by the Android team. Let's open the terminal and run Flutter Clean to wipe the build cache. And to build the app bundle, we'll run this command, Flutter Build App Bundle. Now, Flutter will build your app for release and create the app bundle that you will upload to Google Play. If you want to test the release version on a device, you can build an APK instead by following these steps here in the documentation. Now the build has completed, you will find the release bundle for your app at this path. Now, go watch this video where I show you how to step-by-step -step publish this app bundle to the Google Play Store. But before you go, please give us a like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for future content.